Okay, let me get settled in here. This video is going to be, let me pull a little closer, going to be about, um, I got several emails and requests about average expenses here, what it, what it costs per month in your normal bills to be here. They vary depending on the size of your house size of the property, the value of that property, and so on and so forth. But I can give you a, an idea of what it costs. I've got an average size, um, I got what they call a designer home. I'm in a new area. So being in a brand new area, I've also got a bond that I gotta pay. Um, you can pay the bond off anytime you want, but most people don't because of the interest rates. They just don't mess with it. And I'm not gonna mess with it either. Uh, up in the older areas, one of the advantages of buying up there is two, two reasons really. One is the bond is generally paid off up there. That's money you save at the end of the year because your bond payment is added to the property tax. Property tax here is paid once a year, not twice a year like a lot of other areas. So the bond payment is due at the same time property taxes is due. It's all on the same bill. If you have a bond payment paid off, obviously you've saved quite a bit there. Another reason to buy the older section as compared to the newer section, it's not a good and a bad thing, it's just a different thing, is that those houses up there have been there for, it varies depending on what section you're in, anywhere from 10 to 20 years. So there's a lot of upgrades on them houses that the previous owners have done that you won't have to worry about. It could be simple things like landscaping is done. In other words, the palm trees and things are bought and put in. They're more mature. They've been there for a few years. Um, the, I don't know what you call it, but the stackable bricks that go around your flower beds and makes a really nice edging. Those are generally in place. Um, the lanai's, which when you buy a new house, it's, it's a screened in back porch is what it really is. They could be enclosed. Some people have actually enclosed them, put walls up, insulated them. They have a separate air conditioner in them and they actually take the sliding doors out and make it an extension of the house. Other people, like what I did, is I put in sliding glass doors, which you could put in, there are different styles. Um, mine go from the ceiling to the floor. So when I want the lanai completely opened so that the air can flow through on a nice day, I can slide them back all the way around the lanai. It's an upgrade. So, and, you know, and then of course the driveway is being painted or, or paver bricks or whatever if you buy an older house. That stuff is all done and you don't have to worry about it. So it's just something to think about. You buy a brand new house, none of that is done. But you have a clean slate to do exactly what it is you want to do. Okay. Or the second thing is anything visible from the street Anything visible outside actually that could interfere with a neighbor or a view that the neighbor has. Any construction job or upgrading job has to be approved by the, um, oh gosh, I wish I could think of the name of it. You get all this information when you buy a house. They give you a book with all the phone numbers in it. Architectural Review Committee, ARC. Uh, and they'll, you submit a plan. It's a very simple, basic plan that you submit and then they'll go over it and they'll either approve it or deny it or tell you it has to be changed in some minor way or whatever and then they once they approve it you go ahead with the project and then if anybody complains about it later down the road you've got that paper it was approved villages has it on the computer it's been approved and there's nothing nobody can do about it if it's not been approved all it takes is one neighbor one person that lives in your area or for that matter anybody that lives in another area that says look I don't like that because I tried to get that done 10 years ago and they told me no so how did that person get it see what I'm saying it gets in a little petty shit they um, they make a complaint they check and find out you didn't get it approved they will actually come and give you a, a formal letter telling you that it's got you got to get it back within your deed restrictions every district has a deed restriction I'm in District 10. When you buy a house at the bank, you're going to sign a paper saying that you agree to follow the deed restrictions. 
So you have to know what they are to follow them, and you get a copy of that. And they're on the internet also. Every district has them. So there's no excuse to say, I didn't know that. Well, you do know that. Okay, get down to expenses here. Hope this video ain't gonna be too long. Homes here, what do they cost? These are some of the questions I got. They're all over the gamut. Uh, you can buy a home in the hundreds, uh, 100,000, 100, 110,000, 120,000. That's way up in the older area. Most of those homes are modular type homes, prefab homes, if you will. Um, little by little, uh, as the people get older and move out, they're sold off. Some people are still buying them. The villages bought up like a hundred and some of them, I think. They're moving them out and they're going in and they're building uh, designer homes like what I've got uh, up in the older area. The lots are bigger and so they, they're buying them up. But there's still a lot of them available. When I say a lot, I mean many, many, many hundreds, maybe thousands of them. They're just all over the place. And you can buy a house well over a million dollars. They're, they're all over the place. Uh, this is where everybody from every gamut of life comes together and so no matter what you buy, it's, it's however much you want to spend. Average price of a house here is probably, I'm going to say between um, two to three, pretty average, um, and then they go up and down from there. The electric bill. Most people I talk to the electric bill, and I know what's what ours is too, most people are averaging about a hundred bucks a month. Our biggest electric bill is because of the air conditioning. Cause we run them nine months out of the year, 10 months out of the year. So hundred bucks a month, give or take. Water bill. You have two actual water bills, but it's on the same bill. You have what they call potable water. That's the water that's in your house, the drinkable water, the bath water, that kind of water in the house is, is a bill. Then you have the water that you use to water your grass, outside water. That's recyclable water. That water actually comes out of the retention ponds, that's all over the place, and that's on another uh, meter, and you're billed for that also, but it comes as one bill. And that bill is actually attached to another bill, like maybe the garbage or something. I'm not 100% sure what that bill is, but I'm pretty sure it's minimal. 50 bucks a month, give or take. I don't really know. I don't pay attention to bills. My wife pays them. So, but, but it's a minimal charge. Property tax and bond payment. This is gonna be your biggest expense at the end of the year. It's due in December. You actually have, I think, four different months to pay it. December's the first month that you, you, you actually owe that money. And you actually, if you pay it in December, that's the cheapest it'll be. You can actually pay it in January also, and on your bill it'll tell you how much that bill will be in January. It's a little bit more than December. February's the same way, a little bit more. And I think, I wanna say that March is the last month. It is due in March without penalty. And it's a little bit more. That's the highest that you'll pay. We always pay ours in December to save that little bit. And our property taxes runs around $2,200 a year uh, when I bought this house, it was 221. So our property taxes is roughly $2,200 a year in December, and our bond payment is $2,000 a year, and it's actually added to the property taxes. So when your property taxes comes due, you're going to have a bill on there for your bond payment all at the same time. So our property taxes and bond payments give or take around 4,200 bucks a year. Your homeowner's insurance, I didn't give a price on that because everybody's all over the gamut on that, depending on what you get, what you want covered, what's the uh, deductible going to be. It all depends on who the insurance company is going to be. Um, if you've got a, uh, um, a vinyl sided house as opposed to a, stu a stucco house, it just depends on what, what all that is. So you just have to kind of figure that out on your own. Um, I'm going to say that the average homeowner's policy around here is probably around five to six hundred a month on an average. That's probably pretty close. Car, car insurance, same thing. Depending on what you got. You got a Lamborghini, you're not going to be paying the same insurance as a guy driving a Volkswagen Rabbit. So, it all depends on what it is. Uh, your garbage and your yard maintenance 
uh, pickup, yard waste. That comes on Wednesday. Garbage is picked up twice a week. Ours is Tuesday and Friday. And then yard, yard waste, which is like your, if you tr trim your trees, your bushes, they pick all that yard waste up on Wednesday. The only thing here is all your yard waste has to be in one of those recyclable bags. The, looks like a great big grocery bag, the brown paper bag. They have to be in that and they'll pick it up. Um, you'll learn real quick as a new one. If you don't do that, you're going to wonder why they didn't pick it up. It'll be a tune of your driveway because they won't pick it up. Uh, that's that's minimal also like $25 a month for all that and it's on like I say it's on another bill like that's maybe attached to the light bill I can't really remember all these bills but they just come and they're kind of like this is your light bill here's your garbage blah 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 total amount that kind of thing uh, amenity fee that's a monthly fee that's fairly significant not really compared to a lot of other neighborhoods our amenity fees here right now is $144 a month and um, that is attached to might be the garbage bill and the yard waste is all that's together i bet it is i bet that's it amenity fee garbage yard waste is all together so you get that bill it'll be 160 bucks a month something like that and that amenity fee pays for everything that you have access to as a resident all the swimming pools and we have hundreds you mean the golf courses they're all over the place you're automatically a member of something like 16 country clubs here. No yearly uh, fees for any of that. Um, the golf the golf cart trails where you can drive. We're 40 square miles now of uh, the village's golf cart trails. That's access to three different counties. So that pays for the golf cart trails and all the maintenance on the golf cart trails. Uh, it pays for all the um, regional recreational centers, which has got sports pools, uh, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, 140 some dollars a month. When you compare it to a lot of places down here and what they're paying on their amenity fees to have a pool and a rec center and all that, ours is a deal, a real deal. We got 16 regional rec centers. I don't know, it's like 35, 36 executive golf courses. 16 country clubs it's all for the 140 some bucks a month but for me that 140 some bucks a month what pays for me is the golf cart trails i don't drive a car i take my cart everywhere i want to go and the car just sits in the garage i don't i don't never need it i don't never take it the gas in the golf cart is a little kind of an issue. i get a gas cart that's a little kind of an issue i'm joking here i fill my uh, golf cart up like once a month <laughs> whether it needs it or not and keep in mind, I take mine everywhere. And at the end of the month, I usually have, it's a 6.1 gallon gas tank in a golf cart. And when I fill it up, uh, like the first of the month, um, I'll take something like three gallons, maybe a hair over three gallons. So a month I'm using basically half a tank. And I use it everywhere. So you know, have to take it for what it's worth. And then the other thing would be cable your cable cost here. Everything here is sold in a package. Um, we were Bright House and then Spectrum Cable took it over and so you get like cable depending on what package you get with how many channels, your telephone and your Wi-Fi for a package deal. Um, and that, there again that cost is all over the place because you can also get uh, Comcast which is Infinity. You can also get uh, I think it's CenturyLink. You can have, um, it's been approved here, you can get DISH it can't be on your house. Uh, most of them put, uh, well, the, the dish companies know what to do here. They usually put a little pole or something next to your house and they fashion it to that. It's very, you know, it's hidden. Um, most people will plant like a bush around it so you can't even see it. So you get dish, so that's yeah, all over the place. I don't know what the average cost for all this is. I think my wife told me that ours recently went up because our trial period for two years you know you get them special deals has run out so i'm looking now to about maybe making a change so with my cable we've got high speed wi-fi uh telephone never used the telephone but i guess you got to have it because of the wi-fi because it plugs in there or something um it's something like 168 dollars a month and i don't have premium channels on the, on the uh, cable so I think that's ridiculous so I'm looking at making a change to cut that bill down somewhat so 
I think that about takes care of it. Garbage maintenance, yard, bond payments, water, electric, homes. Um, the only other thing is you can go to different websites here to get home prices and stuff. www.thevillages.com. There's information there. I'm not sure which web it is that has the homes for sale a button to click on. And then there's also www.thevillages.net. And that's where I go all the time to set up tea time. So you have to have your residence ID number to do all that. And so I'm not sure what kind of um, information is on the .net website that you can get access to without being a, a resident. But, but there might be something on there too. But um, just to give you some kind of an idea if I can get it here. We have a local paper that comes out every day. And there's always houses telling you what open houses are, what time, where at, how much. If I can get get this to show you a little bit, let me get this camera here. You can kind of get an idea here by looking at some of the houses. There's a manufacturer. Well, it's not a manufacturer's house. Well, maybe the, I don't know. One sixty nine. Here's a house here that's in. Uh, where's it at? The village of La Belle, right there. See where it says the village of La Belle? And how much is that house? Three, three thirty nine. Village of La Belle is a new area. Uh, here's one here, Corpus Christi Village of Duval. Um, what is that? Two fourteen. Here's one here. It's in Osceola Hills. That's a new area. And uh, what, what is that? Uh, Four ninety nine. Um, at the top up there, see where it says Gardenia. That's the model of the home. See what that says? Manufactured. See what that home says? Begonia. Those are the models of the home. And uh, here's one here for, looks like a nice one. That's my realtor right there. She sold me this house. What is that? That's a Begonia for three forty three nine. So, to give you an idea. The only other thing I'll say about the realtors is this. If you go to the Village's uh, Realty company to buy a home or, or to talk about buying a home. If it's a brand new home, unless there's some kind of a special sale going on, giving you like a 6% discount or something, there's no negotiating the price. You don't put in an offer on a brand new home. It doesn't work here. You can't, if he's got a half million bucks on a house, say 500,000, you go look at it and you decide, you know, it's a brand new home, Villages Realty Company, and matter of fact, the Villages Realty Company is the only real estate company here that'll sell you a brand new home. The other real estate companies can't do it. The Villages won't work with them. So it says five hundred thousand. You say, okay, I'm gonna put in an offer. The real estate company, in a real nice way, is gonna let you know that it doesn't work that way. Half a million bucks, take it or leave it. They got a list a mile long. They're gonna move on to the next one. But if you buy a pre-owned home. Like say I put mine up for sale for say I don't know say two fifty, and you go look at it, and you decide you know I like the neighborhood I'm interested in it. this one because it's pre-owned you can say I want to put in an offer I'll offer in two thirty five. You can do that on a pre-owned home, but you cannot do that on a brand new home. Just a little information. Okay, that's it. See you later. Talk later. Have fun. Any questions? Let me know. Click down below. Hit the subscribe button down there. I need all I can get. Have a good day.